Hi, welcome to 528 Revolution Television. I'm Sherry Kane. And I'm Dr. Len Horowitz. We're here today to review a fantastic film called Closed Circuit. Closed Circuit was produced by Focus Features. It's a subsidiary of NBC Universal Comcast. Besides Comcast, you have Working Title Films, a British film production company based in London, owned by Universal Studios. The film was directed by John Crowley and written by Stephen Knight. Comcast Corporation is the largest cable company in the United States, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, media conglomerates. What you probably don't know is that Universal Comcast had a heavy investment by the Royal Family of England through General Electric Corporation, and that in March of this year, Comcast actually completed a $16.7 billion purchase from General Electric for the film company and the entire operation. Why that's important in this film is because it takes place in England and it's all about the government, it's all about secreted military as well as terroristic agendas of the British government as well as the United States government through MI6 and the CIA. And it's also really about the judicial system and how it relates to what's going on here in America and the judicial system. And you can see by watching this film the corruption that goes on among the judges, among the attorneys, and how they actually can set up people for certain crimes that they're not guilty of, or how they can actually withhold evidence in closed circuit hearings. This is the most high profile murder case in British history. You and Ms. Howe are defending the accused terrorist from the government. And you're from the New York Times. I don't speak to journalists about trials relating to matters of national security. So, Sherry, what do you think about this film? Uh, I thought the film was excellent, and I'm not surprised that the Washington Post gave it a bad review. After all, and this is exposing the way their system operates. I think it's great that they are making films like this, Although the agenda of why they're doing this, because the particular people behind it really are not they're people. Globalists. Exactly. So why would they actually do this? And why would they create a film like this? Well, they're creating a film like this because World War III essentially is on tap. And that you've got to take out respect for the American government as well as the British government if you're going to incite World War III against Muslim nations that are sided with China and Russia against the white Anglo-American cartel. There is some evidence against you which the prosecution believes should be kept secret from the public and from you. You broke into my chambers. I think you're mistaken. Claudia, we're being managed. Eric Banner and Rebecca Hall portray Martin Rose and Claudia Simmons Howe, barristers whose romantic past might destroy their defendant's future. Not that their client, heroin addict Farouk Erdogan, played by Dennis Moshito, is a prize, only that he deserves a vigorous defense. So what you have in the beginning is that the heroine and the hero are both lawyers defending a supposed terrorist that turns out not to be a terrorist, but in the grand tradition of American and British propaganda, of course, it's a Muslim who's implicated. Within six months, our client goes from driving a taxi to driving a brand new Mercedes, spending two grand a week. Where did all the money come from? The British intelligence brought him in as a double agent. He was supposed to lead them to the terrorist cell before the attack. And that's where it all went wrong. Exactly. Much like 9-11. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Roger Ebert passed away this year, actually a few months ago, and he actually reviewed this film and panned it. And so did the Washington Post. Of course, the mouthpiece for the Central Intelligence Agency doesn't want you to see this film because it is so real, it is so true to reality, and unfortunately it deals with the intelligence community as well as the national security matters where terrorism plays a role and, as we've heard around the world, particularly from Russian television as well as in China, it's well known that the British Secret Service, MI6, and the CIA have been conducting terrorist matters, terrorist attacks, bombings, as well as civilian slayings in Syria and elsewhere in the Middle East. So this film really strikes at the heart of truth, and I think that that's probably why it has been panned 
by Roger Ebert, as well as the Washington Post, whereas most other reviewers gave it an excellent rating. Coming from We the People, the reviews were great, and they really did see it much like we did, that the film was really right on, that it really did pin what really actually happens in the court, and all of the stuff that you see that they want to make up and say how the court has so much justice going on is just really a bunch of nonsense, because this film really shows you that. You know, it's interesting because Roger Ebert, in his review, completely neglected the most important aspect of the film talked about the closed circuit being simply a television monitoring system and increased government surveillance, when in fact the film and its heart, most important subject matter, dealt with the fact that your court systems, your circuit courts included, are closed. They're closed to truth, they're closed to justice, they're being censored, and information and intelligence therein is likewise being subject to censorship which doesn't amount to freedom in a democratic society. It amounts to fascism. And in essence, that's really what this film is about. What I got the most out of it was really, it was telling people the truth as we see it in the fact that people are out there being hired as double agents. So you have people like Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein, who basically worked with the CIA, worked with George Bush, and now they're considered terrorists. So what happened? What went wrong? Why now was there all this terrorism and blame on these people, these so-called former friends or colleagues? And, and that's what happens. You become compromised. And that's when they feel like there's nothing they can do with you anymore. And uh, in this film, it really did show you how this guy was working as a double agent. And this isn't the first film we saw in recent times. Elysium actually had a similar theme going on in that film, which wasn't nearly as good as this film, but it did show you how the people at the highest levels are operating with terrorists in controlled opposition and having them work as double agents. So in that film there was Jodie Foster who was working with the double agent and in the end he actually came and attacked her uh, and that's what happens. It was, well, I'm done with you using me to this level. I've let you use me this many times, and now I'm going to get revenge. And that's pretty much what happened in that film. So I can see how, in these recent films that are coming out, how the whole use of the double agent, and I do believe it has to do with what's happened in the past with Julian Assange and with Snowden. They were exposing the government as being terrorist, really. Really complicit in global genocide, it amounts to when you consider terrorism and militarization kills civilians. Prior to the bombing, there was no contact between MI5 and the defendant. Defense lawyers who ask the wrong sorts of questions, they're expendable. There are over half a million closed circuit cameras in London. I'm sure there are at least half a dozen watching me right now. There are people who really want a conviction here. Should have kept her mouth shut. MI5 do not kill people on the mainland. And what the hell have you got yourself into? We're simply trying to defend our client. Dump your bag, dump everything. Get out of there, now. My favorite part of the film Closed Circuit was when Eric Bana's character held up a note to the terrorists when he went to visit him in prison. I'm not going to tell you what the note said, but that was my favorite part of the whole movie because that really kind of set the pace for what the film was about, I believe. Sherry, I also wanted to talk about the connections between the closed circuit courts, and that is the generally the courts in general, again, a major theme of this film was that there is covert operations and censorship ongoing behind closed doors uh, with regard to major national security matters dealing with the court systems and supposedly the administration of justice. Well, here in the United States, as well as in Britain, particularly here we're broadcasting from Hawaii, the British common law has been fundamental to United States constitutional law, as well as now the beginning of a renaissance, a revolution in the legal system that is being advanced by the common law folks at Common Law Offices of America, Anthony Williams, Hep Gwynn, who we've talked about before, and uh, Marvin Byrd. These folks, as well as many other 
private attorney generals. They're acting as private attorney generals under USC 42, section 1988. That is civil rights legislation that gives the private attorney generals and virtually attorneys in fact, those that are given the responsibility to defend in courts of law for people who don't know the legal system or who are virtually incompetent. Here we're broadcasting from Hawaii, and if you looked at the first law in Hawaii law, that's Title I-1 of the Hawaii Codes, you'll find that the Hawaii Codes, the entire state, is based on British common law, and that honors British common law, and that interestingly enough, as we have been going through courts and various dealings with the litigation process, we find that so rarely, if ever, does the British common law and United States constitutional law play a role in the state statutory laws and in the circuit courts here in the state of Hawaii. It's unfortunate because what we've also learned is that not only is that negligence and omission part of what's called fraud. Fraud in law is based on omissions, misrepresentations. That's fraud and that is actionable as fraud and it's actually contempt of court if you have a lawyer or if you have a judge commit fraud and that it's materially substantive fraud that they've committed, they need to have disciplinary hearings. But the fascinating thing here, if you begin to study the common law and even the current manners in which the judges and the attorneys are using the court systems for virtual financial payoffs primarily, and it's a bar association enterprise that is defined under the racketeering statutes as a corrupt organization that is making money as a monopoly. And you begin to then look at licensing. You begin to realize that there is no licensing for attorneys in the state of Hawaii and probably anywhere else where attorneys are engaging in fraud or engaging in malpractices, they're engaging in bad moral character, and these are the licensing requirements that the attorneys must abide by in order to be respected in the court of law. Unfortunately, in the current system, that's all been virtually trashed, and that going back to the common law and opening up the closed circuits in the law is what really this film review is primarily about. This is something that needs to be addressed, and I believe the knowledge of we the people out there in learning and understanding common law is really going to help us get to a position where we can defend ourselves in court, where we can go up against the judicial system and say, wait a minute, I'm not going to be afraid of you or fear you anymore. I know my rights as somebody who values the Constitution. I'm not going to go with the laws that you created. Lawyers that are all belonging to the good old boys club, because a lot of them, even the lawyers, they have no idea what's really going on. They have no idea what the common laws are. And when you hit them with this, they're like, wait a minute, this is illegal. The police say this is illegal. Do you understand the common law? Do you understand the constitutional law? No. And that's the problem right now. We need to educate people. And when you begin to consider the larger payoffs, the military industrial complex, wars, the generation of terrorism and organized crime that uh, basically affect every industry, the energy cartel, nuclear, nuclear weapons. You're looking at arms and drugs, the drug cartel, and of course that relates to the pharmaceutical cartel. These are all operations that effectively are taking place under closed circuits. These matters come potentially before courts of law. There's civil suits, there's class action suits that come before various courts. And again, if you're a member of the bar and you're malpracticing, then you're really an outlaw and you need to be disciplined. And that is what is sorely lacking. In British common law, for example, going back to the 1600s, you have the Statutes of Monopolies Act that outlaws monopolizing organizations such as the bar. You have one bar association that's associated with the Supreme Court of Hawaii that dictates the judicial policies and what goes on in courts of law that tolerates this kind of closed door dealings and ultimately that is fraudulent, it's misrepresenting, it's not an open democratic court, it has no relevance to 
virtually the trial by jury that's required under the United States Constitution for those rights that citizens have, the inalienable rights to life, liberty, pursuits of happiness. If you're going to take away those and properties from people without trial by jury and by closed doors dealings between judges and corrupt attorneys, then you have a gross dysfunction of the American legal system. Of course, it's ongoing, as this film shows, in Britain as well. Well, that's about the end of our review for today. And thank you so much for joining us on 528 Revolution Movie Reviews. I'm Sherry Kane. Dr. Len Horowitz here, thanking you for joining us as well.